Hi, I'm Ellie, and a couple of weeks ago I purchased this 2007 Toyota Hiace to self-convert for van life. I'm well into the conversion now, as you can see, but this week I'm going to be going through what I've done for the floor, which is finally in. I will be documenting my entire conversion process here on my channel over the coming weeks, so if you want to come along for the journey, be sure to subscribe. And thank you so much to all of my current subscribers. I'm a teeny tiny YouTuber and your support means so much to me, so thank you guys. I'm Ellie Wilder and you're watching Wilder in Motion. In a previous video, I went through treating the rust and cleaning the van to the point where it was stripped back and ready to get the floor started. So the normal first step for the floor is to lay some wooden battens which the subfloor will then sit on. However, there's a few reasons why I didn't go with this option. The first one is that the ridges in my floor aren't actually straight. They have a bit of a curve in them which would have made cutting these difficult. The other thing is, being a 13 year old van, there is quite a lot of dents all over the floor, some of them very significant. So actually making the floor level would have been extremely time consuming. And finally, I'm trying to maximize the ceiling height as much as possible, so whatever I could do to keep the floor as close to the base as possible was what I was going to go with. So since I didn't go with the battens option, the first step for me was insulation. So let's talk about insulation. Probably one of the most debated things in the van life community. There are team spray foam, team foam board, team sheep's wool, and team no insulation at all so it's hard to know with so much information and so many passionate opinions which one is the right one so for me i am going to give spray foam a shot as far as spray foam goes and generally people's opinions the general consensus is that it's a great option because it's not absorbent so you don't have to worry about the moisture in the van which is a big issue with lots of other things and it also adheres directly to the metal so that sounds like what i want um, i'm traveling in summer so i'm not too concerned about having crazy amounts of insulation because at the end of the day it is a van you are very exposed to the elements and you can only really hope to at least try and get near the outside temperature and it just not completely boil in what's basically an oven and i decided to use spray foam to go in between the ridges of the floor this also helps even out some of the dents a little bit because the spray foam gets in all those little cracks. The reason I didn't do sheet foam is for me, cutting that stuff out is just really fiddly and I don't enjoy doing that. I would rather trim back spray foam than cut out sheet foam. And that's just a personal preference for me. I want to actually enjoy the conversion, not just be focused on the end goal. So I decided to go with a process that I would actually enjoy doing more. So spray foam first impressions are that it expanded a lot more upwards than it did outwards which is a little annoying so I'm going to have to go through and patch up some of the gaps. I also planned to scrape it off as I went so I didn't have to spend so much time cutting it back but this just caused the bubbles to pop. The spray foam was also a lot stickier to the tool I was trying to use to scrape it than it was to the actual surface of the van. And what that means is that I'm not going to be able to use it on the ceiling because I think it's just going to fall back against my face. <laughs> it took me about four cans to do the entire floor, which was a lot. After it was dried, then it was time to cut back the foam. I just used a simple handsaw for this and it came off really easily. This helped to level out the floor. If there were any dents that I knew about, I was sure to keep things level in that area. So my opinion on the spray foam is it works. Like obviously I'm touching here and here. This is very cold and this is just the ambient temperature. So I easily had way more than enough to do this whole thing. But just I couldn't have enough control over it to get it where I really wanted it. As for what to use for the actual subfloor itself, I ummed and ahed about this a lot. The common choice is marine ply, but on further investigation, I found out that you need to seal this as well, and the sealant costs $50 a litre. So it seems like a lot of money to invest in an expensive kind of wood that still needed an expensive sealant. 
I was also keeping in mind the fact that since I wasn't using battens, the subfloor would be sitting directly on top of the metal ridges, which is a condensation point and might lead to the wood getting damp and then rot, which is worst case scenario. So in the end, I decided to lay a vapor barrier. Now this is a physical barrier that is designed to keep the two zones completely separate. So if condensation does form on the metal, it shouldn't penetrate the wood. I ended up getting a vapor barrier which was designed to go underneath a laminate floor and it also had two mils of wadding in it which provided a little bit of cushioning underfoot, a teensy bit of insulation and ultimately just made the material a bit more durable. So this was just a case of rolling it out and carefully cutting it to my template. I was using these vinyl planks to hold it down but it does give you an idea of what it might look like. When it's done. I then transferred that inside the van and used some insulation sealing tape to seal up the crack through the center and all of the edges. I'm trying to get it completely sealed as much as possible so that the two areas are totally isolated. It is instantly more comfortable now that I'm not sitting on metal and it's definitely a lot warmer under the foot. In the meantime, I sourced some regular plywood, which I decided to seal with paint. I decided to go with regular plywood because it is still a very strong and rot resistant wood, but it's now not going to be directly in contact with the metal, so the chance of it getting wet is lower. All the same, it is important to seal ply, especially the edges, so I just went with some mold resistant paint. So I'm hoping that I've covered all bases and that mold is not going to happen at all. And I will be making a video installing my ventilation system coming up, which is key to preventing mold. So using my template again, I cut out the plywood to size and then gave it a coat of paint. Once it was all dry, it was time to go over the top of my vapor barrier. Well, would you look at that? I finally have a floor about two weeks later than planned, but better late than never. There is the cracks where the ply joins, so I'm going to go through with some liquid nails and make sure it all is in one piece so it doesn't move around like this bit that I'm sitting on right now is. Then I went around the edges with some silicon. The reason for this is it has a bit of give to it, so as the van's moving it's going to be vibrating a lot and this will allow for a little bit of movement, unlike something like liquid nails where it could potentially just tear away from the wall or crack completely, this is going to be able to bounce back with the natural movements of the van. So that is it for my subfloor. I will be going over the top with some wood look vinyl floorboards in a later video. For the moment, I'm just keeping the subfloor bare while I continue to work on the walls. So if any rogue pieces of spray foam drop off, I won't be too disappointed about it ruining the floor. The walls are clearly very well underway and that will be a video coming up very, very soon. And if you don't want to miss that, be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.